Yeah. Every spoke will play at the front of the building. Number 343, you come in. We have Neil Brown. We do have the second fire fighter. This is Matthew 343. We have a meeting. Kevin the time is falling through the floor. Our defense is falling. I repeat. What makes me wake up every day? I, I love my job. I come in and I never know what's going to happen at work. I love the people I work with. Uh, it's, it's like a second family to me. Even though, you know, we joke around and we kid around a lot, once the tones go and we get in the truck, it's business. In particular with, uh, with, with Toronto Fire Services and other services that use a similar schedule, you're on a 24-hour schedule. Uh, so you're living uh, as well as working with these people uh, for long periods of time. And uh, you know, sometimes relationships get strained, uh, but you have to keep things you know, upbeat. You have to be uh, amicable with, with guys. You know, the fire service today are a very, very diverse and integrated organization. We are your high angle rescue staff. If a person falls off the Scarborough Bluffs, we're the people coming in to rig and sling up a rescue and be able to bring you back up the bluffs. We're the ones pulling you out of the elevators when you get stuck on the elevators. We're the ones cutting you out of your cars when you're in a vehicle accident. So we get a lot of training when we first come on, but that training is ongoing. Every single day when we're here in the hall, we have a training expectation, a training schedule that could be online or practical down at the academies. The biggest things in terms of teamwork and you know looking after each other all the time, especially in a fire, stay in a group you know, to make sure that if one goes down, the other one's there. And uh, yeah, this big time teamwork. Um, you gotta get along with your crew, which is great. You know, I've, I've got 23 years on and these guys are like brothers to me, right? Like, uh, yeah, we get along really well. When I, I started at this station, so I've, I've grown here, uh, both as a firefighter and as a person. The, the dynamic changes so much uh, with your position within the fire hall as new people come in as well. Like I've been waiting three years for a rookie to come in and now all of a sudden we've got, uh, we've got two brand new guys. And obviously, yeah, there's a lot of things that go on behind the scenes, like horsing around and joking around with guys, trying to throw them off their game and such. <laughs> it's just the way it is at the fire hall. You have to keep things light. And when you're rescuing side, it's a great feeling. I mean, uh, mostly after the fact, right? Like if you were able, because sometimes you rescue someone, they won't make it afterwards. But if they make it, of course, it's a great feeling. And if they didn't, you know, you have some regrets that, you know, you know, if I had found them earlier or whatever. But, you know, it is what it is. And yeah, yeah. Yesterday there was three or four deaths at uh, Dover Court and DuPont. So uh, the crews that responded to that, uh, they'll be going through different things in their mind depending on their experience level, what they've dealt with in the past, uh, how involved they were directly with, uh, with the, the victims, whether are they the people that pulled them out, did they try and revive them, were they removed from the scene, were they at the pump, you know, it'll have different effects on people. And, and you have to keep your eye on your brothers and sisters in situations like that because you don't know what they're going through and you have to keep your eyes open for signs of post-traumatic stress disorder uh, and that doesn't go just for those types of calls, it could be things that go on in their personal lives, it could be that the the calls that you're running spill over into your personal life and it's, there's a lot of complicated issues that can go on because of that. This plaque shows all the members of the Toronto Fire that have died throughout the entire job. These members here were stationed at this fire hall. It'll actually make us stronger knowing that what we do for a living will stop future people from dying. And we keep citizens safe, even though we put ourselves at risk. As long as the citizens are safe, that's all we care about. That's why we're here. You know, I think inevitably we understand that we're gonna be going into an emergency most people are trying to get away from, whether it's a vehicle accident or a fire, or in my truck's case, a hazardous materials response call. So I think a lot of it is the repetitive training. You're focused on what it is you have to do physically or tactically, if I could use that term and you're not so much getting focused or thrown off course by visually what you're going to encounter. If there's any problems, passing it on to the, to the crew that relieves you. And if you're the oncoming crew, to make sure you come in in a timely order. Okay, I think I gotta go.
as much as this station takes a lot of energy out of you, because it's, it's the busiest station in the country and we're constantly, constantly working, it's fun. I really do enjoy what I, what I do here. There, there's no job like it in the world, to be honest with you. There's nothing like it.